Death Note carries the distinction of being the gateway anime for scores of Western adolescents and young adults. In fact, if not for Death Note and Gurren Lagann, I'm not sure I would have given the medium much of a chance. Sure, I grew up on Pokemon, Dragon Ball Z, and Yu-Gi-Oh, but those shows were geared toward a younger audience who would purchase gobs of merchandise every time Goku changed his hair color. Seriously though, Kim Kardashian, i.e. Frieza, is jelly from all the attention she's not getting from her quote-unquote enhancements. The butt just got 10 inches bigger, people! Anyhow, I was a big fan of Death Note's intellectual approach to the introduction of the preeminent power that is the Death Note. So much so that I binge watched it twice in a 7 day period when it first came out, while being in school. Thank God, I mean the Shinigami King for coffee! Aside from overly dramatic dialogue, romanticized main characters, and an underwhelming conclusion, Death Note is an anime that warrants the massive amount of hype that it receives. Of course, I could go into detail explaining each facet of the show that I found enjoyable. However, this review is about its one-shot successor, titled Death Note Special One Shot. Uh, yeah, title could have used a little bit of creativity. In all seriousness, this Death Note one shot had an interesting idea that could have been good if fleshed out over the course of numerous chapters, but the brevity of the work made certain outcomes inevitable, thus inhibiting the enjoyment of the reader. The one shot starts off with a Japanese boy, Minoru Tanaka, who comes into contact with Ryuk due to Ryu craving apples. Not wanting to proverbially write his own gravestone like the previous Kira, Minoru decides not to use the Death Note, but to auction it off to the highest bidder. As anticipated, there is a high demand for the greatest killing instrument known to man. Eventually though, the last bidders are the richest countries in the world, whom wish to possess the Note for geopolitical advantages. The first qualm I have with this one shot is the lack of alliances in the bidding for the Death Note. If such a power existed, why wouldn't China strategically align itself with Russia to outbid the United States? This would, inevitably, lead to a proverbial alliance race in which groups of countries would align with each other to attain enough capital to get the Death Note. Afterwards, however, the winning alliance would need to determine who would possess the Death Note itself and how they would share in its quote-unquote benefits. Somewhat similar to the Yotsuba group in the original Death Note, but on a much larger scale with greater political ramifications. My second qualm is with the superfluous addition of Nier to the story. In effect, he serves one purpose, to validate Akira's superior intelligence to the original Kira, via admitting defeat. I.e., if you defeat the man who defeated the man, then, ergo, you are smarter than the previous Kira. The original Death Note was a proverbial competition of the mind between two strategic savants, L and Light. There's no need to diminish their battle by having a Kira effortlessly conquer the top mastermind, that being Nier who defeated Light. My third and final qualm deals with the ending, an ending that was retconned to all hell and ruined the entire proceeding. Angered by the quote unquote misuse of the Death Note, the Shinigami King wrote a new rule that any human involved in buying or selling the Death Note would die upon completing the transaction. Do you see the problem? The whole premise was that Minoru discovered a loophole in the set of predetermined rules of the Death Note, and instead of being rewarded for his cleverness, he was punished retroactively. What the hell was the point of the one-shot if the Shinigami King was going to troll the human with superior wits? Furthermore, the transfer of wealth from Murka to Japan was thinly veiled Japanese nationalism. I get it, Trump's not popular around the world. But combating his abrasive nationalism with petty nationalism is just... petty. Unfortunately, it was a failed political jab that makes Marco Rubio's ill political jokes look clever. All in all, this one shot was ill-advised and had a clear ulterior motive that I, personally, did not find amusing. And I voted for Bernie Sanders! 
That's all I got on this review of the Death Note one-shot manga, guys. Had an interesting concept, but pretty much failed everywhere else. Ah well, read the original and enjoy that one. Catch you on the flip side.